Welcome back guys. So in this video we will see how can we enable attachment for our intersections. And the reason we will do that again because we need to collect data from the street using collector app. And one of the good things about collector app is that you can add attachment as images or taking a picture using your phone or even taking a video or a voice note. So in order to allow this to happen on the collector app, we need to enable attachment. So every time someone create a new intersection or whatever the type of data you are collecting or creating, they can add attachment or pictures to this data. And there's two ways to enable attachment for any feature class you have. Again, you can do the same by right click here and say manage and say enable attachment. Or you can open the geoprocessing tool and say enable attachment. And you will see that you have the same tool right here. But because we have one feature class, so we will just right click here and say manage enable attachment. And here it will ask us where you want to save the attachment because it will create a new table to save the attachment. So I will keep it in the same geo database and I will say run. It will take a couple seconds. And once it's done, as you see right here on our window, we have our main feature class and here the table that will save this attachment, the pictures, the images or anything. And also we have a relationship class created to connect those two things together. So let's go to our map and add some attachment to see how can we do that. And then we will come back and see how this relationship been created. So let's go to the map. Uh, you can create a new point and add attachment or you can select an existing one and add attachment. So let's select an existing one. This one, for example, it's a circle. So we can go to the attributes. And when you go to the attributes, you will see that here you have the intersection type is roundabout and you have a new tab here showing right now. If this layer doesn't have enable attachment, you cannot see this. But because we have enable attachment enabled right now, we can see it. So we can click on this one and say, I want to add a new attachment and we will go to our images and we will add the roundabout image and we can also add this one and we'll say open. And now we have two attachment added to this image and let's save it and say yes. And then now at any time, if someone come and just do identify on this image, they will see the images we just uploaded right now. So as you see here, this is the first one and you click here and you see the second one and you can view how many attachment and if the attachment is not a picture, maybe it's a video or a voice note or anything else or a PDF, you can download it if you cannot view it right here. And at any time, if you want to remove or add other attachments, you can just choose the feature you want to edit and then go to the attributes and you can choose to open the attachment by clicking here or save the attachment somewhere else or you can refresh just in case if you want to update anything or you can delete any attachment or add a new attachment. So here you can manage your attachments for any feature you have. So that's how we can enable attachment. So right now let's go back and see how this relationship been created because it's really good to know what's going on behind the scene. So you have a better understanding of the entire image of how things work. But at any time, you don't need to interact with these two feature classes because they are just hosting the attachment and you don't need to change anything. But let's see how that works. So here, as we know, if we open the attribute table for this one, you will see that we have the global IDs and this is a very unique ID for each feature. So what happens here in the attachment table, it takes this global ID as the connection between the features and the attachment you uploaded. So when we come here to the left, you will see that here you have relation underscore global ID and this will match exactly the global ID for the feature we have. So this one ends with 1102. If we go here, you will find that one of the features have is ending with 1102. So this global ID is the connection or the relation ID between this feature class and this table. And here the content type and both of them are images. And here the name of the images we uploaded and the type of data is blob and the global ID for the image itself. So this is a unique ID for the image itself. So every single attachment will have its own global ID. So that's what this table that was automatically generated for us, it just saved the attachments for each feature we create. 
And now let's check the relationship class. We know what is a relationship class because we created one before. So let's right click here and go to properties. And you will see here that the origin name is intersection, which is this table. And the origin primary key is the global ID, which is the global ID for each feature. And the origin foreign key is the relation underscore global ID that inside this intersection underscore attachment. So that's how things work behind the scene for the attachment. But now you know how to create it, how to enable it, how to add attachment, how to edit it. And in the next video, we will see how can we publish this data to ArcGIS Online organization account. We create a web map and also we will be able to add intersections and edit the attachments on ArcGIS Online. So we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.